Have you boys and girls ever just had one of those days where you just wake up and within five minutes, five minutes, you know that this day is only going to get more irritating and worse as it just draws on. I've had one of those days today. It's just, ugh. Nothing big. It's never anything big because you can deal with the big stuff. You know, you've got to process that. It's just all the little things that line up together to form a perfect shit sandwich that you just got to eat. Cycling into work, broke my headphones. Got to work, spilled my soup all down myself, so I've got no dinner all day. Thought, yeah, no problem, on my dinner break, I'll be able to go to the shop. Nope, too busy all day, one of the busiest days at work, so no break for me, all day. And, well, at least I get to finish on time. Nope, IT system goes down, so finishing late. So, ugh, it's just been a chore. But, anyway, enough about me, put my big boy trousers on, I'll be fine. Today, we've got not one but two previews from GW to help me take my mind off things. One, for those creepy, creepy, sickly boys, the Death Guard, and two, for ninth edition. So, we'll start off with the Death Guard. Death Guard, War the Spider. They're after Fabius Bile. Because he's nicked something. Don't know what it is, but apparently it's important enough that Typhus himself is coming after him in the story, so I'm led to believe. Now, for all you good boys and girls who uh, follow Nurgle diligently, You've got new warlord tricks, you've got new strategies, you've got new everything. So, this should make you happy. I mean, I had a quick preview earlier and I thought, mm, yeah, that, that all sounds pretty good. But, starting off right at the top. A relic. Demon's Toll. With each discordant note, this warp-forged bell sends Mortarian suns shuddering out of sync with real space. They quiver upon the cusp of the Imperium, allowing us unholy energies to flow forth and enfold them. Noxious Black Caller model only. Models in friendly Death Guard units, excluding Chaos Cultists and Pox Walkers, they're the zombie guys, have a 5 plus interval save, whilst they were 7 inches of a model from your army with this relic. Wow. Okay, first off, note, it says models and units. So, mm, 5 plus invulnerable save within 7 inches, that's good. I mean, Death Guard are hard to shift. That's well, that's well-founded common knowledge, but give them a 5 up and vulnerable save on top of that. Whew, that's, that's a pretty tasty relic. Very nice. Uh, stratagems. Hmm. Right, new stratagems. Clearly, the Tallyman has been busy writing down new tactics for the Death Guard to use. As War the Spider features a lot of stratagems, if you like play to get it personal, pay a command point to make them into trench fighters. Ooh. Trench fighters, Death Guard stratagem, one command point. The Death Guard excel in the crush of close quarters, driving plague knives into their victims again and again. Okay. The stratagem in the fight phase when a plague marines unit from your army is chosen to fight with. Until the end of that phase, when a model in the unit fights, if it is equipped with one or more plague knives, it can make one additional attack with one plague knife. Eh, you know, it's one command point, you get extra attacks with your plague marines. It's it's not mind-blowing, doesn't set the world on fire, but it's nice, you know, if you want to make sure a, a particularly... Well, a unit that's susceptible to that kind of thing gets extra punishment. One command point. We're all getting new command points in 9th edition, so you may as well spend them on something. Make them trench fighters. Very nice. Now, if you don't like your stabby stab stab, we've got shooty shoot shoot covered as well. Overwhelming generosity. I, I like that. I always liked how, uh, obviously, Nurgle and all their ilk pursue, uh, perceive things as like, oh, they're doing everyone a favour. They're not, they're not cursing the galaxy with horrible viruses and contagions and just... Horrible ways to die. No, they're making everyone like everyone's lives better. Yeah, sure, whatever. Overwhelming generosity. One command point. Unholy filth gushes from Nurgle's faithful into their guns like the armaments threaten to burst like bloated corpses. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase. When a Death Guard unit from your army, excluding again Chaos Cultists and Pox Walkers, is chosen to shoot until the end of the phase, add six inches to the range of plague weapons, excluding melee weapons that that unit are equipped with. So, on command point, you get an extra six inch ranges on your on your guns, your your uh, plague weapons. Yeah, that's pretty good. An extra six inches. Wink, wink. Could go pretty far. Very nice. Plague companies. You know what? It was bugging me. I was thinking to myself earlier, what are the sub factions of uh, the Death Guard called? Because obviously. I know what my stuff is, your high fleet, your chaos, um, your genius heal cults, but what are the 
What are the Death Goblins called? Plague Companies. There you go, that's it. So, obviously, you different Plague Companies, different rules. First one. So, you know, first company, Typhus, Big Man, all that kind of thing. From the Carrion Heaps, Harbinger's stratagem. One should always burn the bodies of the Plague Slain, lest they rise again to assail those still living. So, that's right, you're getting zombies. One to three command points. Use this strategy before the battle. Select one Harbinger Poxwalkers unit from your army for one command point, or two Poxwalkers units for your army for three command points. So either one or two, one or three. You can set up these selected units underground instead of setting them up on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phase, for each of these units that are underground, you can set up anywhere on the battlefield that's wholly within nine inches of blah 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 blah. Give them a deep strike. Make sure, make sure Poxwalkers deep strike. Quite fluffy, you know, zombies. Pretty good, very very thematic, very nice for obviously the harbingers. Is that what they're called? Yeah, your first plague company, the harbingers. Yeah, that's right. Okay, what's this one? Ooh, fourth plague company, a warlord trait. Mmm. Eat a plague. The flesh melting horror, of course, of the eater plague pours off this warlord in waves, reducing his foes to bubbling gruel that he dabs to his own wounds by the fistful to plug them. Oh, Ooh, that's unnecessarily graphic. But yeah, I suppose that ties in well with everything else that goes on in Death Guard. When an enemy model is destroyed as a result of an attack made with a melee weapon by this Warlord, the Warlord regains one lost wound to a maximum of three wounds. So, one model, three wounds. Yeah, so if your Warlord's got a pretty hefty set of attacks, or, you know, weapon and attacks, set him into, like, chaff, three wounds back, bish bosh, very nice, very nice indeed. Fifth company, uh, Bilius Blood Rush, Bilius Blood Rush, Bilius Blood Rush, one command point, Poxmonger's stratagem, the diseased gore flowing through and across the demon engine boils and bubbles as its range burns hot. Use a strategy when you're shooting phase, select a Poxmonger's Demon Engine unit from your army. Until the end of the phase, that unit can shoot in the turn which you fell back. So, you know, like it says here, you try and tie it down, it can just run away, turn around and shoot you in the face. Very nice. Nothing wrong with that. And that's all of the Death Guard. Like I say, they all seem pretty solid to me. Not one of them. I mean, from the carrying heaps, depends how much you like. Ploxwalkers? Ploxwalkers? Pox walkers, but very fluffy. One to three command points. I, I would probably do that, but you know, I I kind of let my my fluffy side take over my meta side, if that makes any sense. I prefer my games to look the part and you know play play kind of fluffy story on that side rather than rather than min max everything. But you know, that's just me. Well, that's the Death Guard squared way. Well, for now, until they come out and vomit all over everything, probably. So, push them to one side, because we've got a new preview for quote-unquote ninth edition. Now, when they did the preview a couple of... Uh, was it two weeks ago now? Time is just... Ugh. They said vehicles now will be able to shoot even if they're in close combat. And I was like, right, you know, bye-bye times when you could just tie up a vehicle with gaunts or something big with gaunts or any kind of like chaff infantry like that. And it, it, I could see it. As much as it... I'm not angry at it. I'm not upset over it. I'm a little bit disappointed that I can't do it anymore, but I see the reasonings behind it. I shouldn't be able to tie up a monolith with just gaunts, which has happened in more than one occasion. But big guns never tire. This is the preview right here. A vehicle or monster model can make attacks with ranged weapons even when its unit is within engagement range of enemy units, so close combat, but it can only make such attacks against enemy units which that is within its engagement range. Fair enough. In such circumstances, vehicle and monster models can target an enemy unit even if other friendly units are within engagement range of the same enemy unit. Note that if a vehicle or a monster unit has more than one range weapon, you can still choose to target units that are not within engagement range of firing models units, but they will only be able to make the attacks with that weapon if all enemy units within the engagement range of the firing models unit have been destroyed when you come to resolve those attacks. Okay, 
In addition, when a vehicle or monster models shoot a heavy weapon, subtract one from the hit rolls when resolving that weapon's attacks while any enemy units that are within engagement range of that model's unit. Okay, so there's a number of things to take down here. Yes, you can still shoot your big vehicles and your big monsters, but you can only shoot them at things that you are currently engage with in close combat, engagement range. I'm guessing that's going to be with inch of an inch sort of thing. Okay, secondly, if your vehicle or monster has multiple weapons, yes, you can use the, the latter weapon options to target units that are further away or outside of engagement resistance, but you've got to make sure that the unit that you're engaged with is dead before you resolve those attacks. Now, here's the catch. Let's say I have got a Carnifex. You know, something I can relate to. He's got two sets of guns, he's got Devourers, and he's got a Venom Cannon, okay? I say, right, I'm in combat with one Space Marine. I'm gonna shoot my Devourers at the Space Marine, and then I'm going to shoot my Heavy Venom Cannon or whatever it is at that tank over there. What happens if I don't kill that Space Marine with the Devourers? Do I still get to shoot the Venom Cannon at the Space Marine? Or does those attacks just go away now? That could probably be FAQ'd, because it's... Again, it's one of those things that's just open to interpretation. And it says here, which is also quite interesting, Heavy Weapons. If you're shooting them, then subtract one. That's... Fair enough, so you will still be flowering at full ballistic skill, well, unmodified ballistic skill, if you're not shooting heavy weapons. That's good news for me, because most of my weapons are assault. Very nice. Okay, yeah, they've changed, yeah, they say they they've changed the way heavy works. When an infantry model shoots a heavy weapon, so chuck one with hit rolls from resolving that weapon's attacks. Oh, excuse me. If the firing model's unit has moved for any reason in this turn. Okay. So there you go. No more penalties for heavy weapons, everybody. As long as you're not infantry. So that means monsters firing a full ballistic skill. Vehicles firing a full ballistic skill. Anything that doesn't have the infantry keyword, you can fire a heavy weapon at full ballistic skill. Unless that heavy weapon has got a profile that says you can't. That is very nice for me. So, yeah. You know what? I can't tie down a monolith anymore. But my monsters are now technically, I think, more effective. I think. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, guys, that about wraps up today. Like I said, been a bad day. Well, an annoying day. But it's nice to see that GW have got me covered with these lovely previews to get me thinking in the old brain pan. What are the Death Guard after? What is Fabius Bile doing with it? And why is he going Cadia? And why? Why are the Custodian Guards after him as well? Are they even after him? Who knows? I'm sure all will be revealed. But until then, obviously, drop your comments in the comments box below. Thumbs up, thumbs down, all that good stuff. And yeah, I will uh, catch you all next time. See you later.